You are gay. Hey wussies, and welcome to a wussy wrap up. My co-stars and I have been down quite the elliptic road of all things campy B-movie within the queer cinematic universe. Some of you have probably fallen behind, but don't fret. I am here to catch you up and hopefully get you to a B as well. Before we really get into it though, I want to remind you that everything mentioned in this video can be found by typing Wussy Movie Club into Apple Music, Spotify, and just about everywhere where podcasts are found. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's get into it. Don't you hate it when things are just a little too dry? Luckily, this movie is anything but. In a future where the water is low but the extremes are high, Tank Girl hits that perfect part of your brain that just wants to watch boss ladies do boss shit. But you know, in like a totally non-male gazy way. Did the movie succeed? Yes. No. Makeup artist Erin came on the show to discuss her point of view, as well as the rest of the panelists defending their camp on, well, this camp. I'm not gonna spoil any of the hot takes, but you should probably check it out because, I mean, there's not really much else to do in a desolate wasteland. I could have lived without the weird pseudo non yes lesbian energy of this movie. It was given very, it was like giving very much so like, hi, my name is Kirsten. My, this is my best friend, Rachel. We both rush together. And if you buy us drinks, we'll kiss in front of you. <laughs> like I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't here for that aspect, but everything else about this movie is just, every scene is a memorable scene. Probably a bad time to ask for a visit, right? But can you blame me for wanting to be in this house? Whatever Happened to Baby Jane is a film about two sisters whose mental health and physical health quickly begin to deteriorate as their lives aren't exactly where they planned them to be. This season has camp in it, but this movie is camp, which is why we had to have writer Topher join and talk about a few things that happened behind the scenes. We won't discuss it here, but let's just say that this movie blurs the lines between actor and acting. And so they had aged past their like viable Hollywood celebrity status. No one knew what to do with a 50 something woman who was a sex symbol in her 20s. And the roles that were available were, were playing society matrons and playing mothers and playing grandmothers. The reason nobody knew what to do with whatever happened to baby Jane when it came out was because these were two motherfucking movie stars, household names, who were starring in something that the industry would say is beneath them. Mm. Ah, the wonderful world of the whiz. This retelling of an already historically queer classic, now set in a destitute, yet somehow still chic and futuristic world, has taken the hearts of many QOCs across the globe. Film enthusiast Shay came on to show her love for the film, and can you blame her? I mean, Mabel King alone makes this movie iconic. Which, speaking of, uh, we, sh we should probably head out before she realizes that we're not at our stations. You know, this is like a classic for a lot of Black people. I've seen this movie so many times. I watch it several times, like a year. What is so amazing is that like, this is what happens when you have a white director who just kind of lets everybody do their thing. Everybody's just doing the damn thing and they're all doing it so well. Listen, I would wait in line for three days to watch this show. I mean, it's showgirls. Arguably the holy grail of all things both campy and queer. This movie is exactly what you think you want from it and then even more than you thought you wanted. It's filled to the brim with quotable lines, which is obviously why we had to have Queen of the One Liner herself, Bitch Pudding, come on and show some praise for this picture. Well, she was a fucking stripper. <laughs> like she had to pay rent. She had to fucking pay rent. She had to fucking pay rent and she paid her rent, bitch, on time. That was a fucking stripper and I live. I fucking live. <laughs> I <laughs> mm -hmm. In a version of Gotham that is both gayer and better than you remember, Batman and Robin hits the exact points that you would want from a superhero movie. All the panelists, including our guest Jono, had a great time discussing and watching the film, and there's not really much I can say to you besides you just need to experience this one. You j j trust me, you just need to go experience this one. 
the Batman and Robin. I mean, damn, nipples everywhere, butts, bodies, bodies, <laughs> montages of sexy bodies. Hey. <laughs> I love this fucking uh, movie, I'll be honest, yeah. I hope you guys had a good time on today's tour, and I want to remind you yet again to anywhere you can find podcasts, whether that be Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere else, type in Wussy Movie Club to find these episodes. You will not regret it. Thanks again for joining me, and I will see you on the next wrap-up.